Hopefully you can hear me over the road noise. I'm here at my dad's today using one of our Wi-Fi LED controllers to do some festive lighting along his fence. This should be fun. So, yeah, cobwebs. <laughs> it's worth explaining what we're doing here. We have got some waterproof uh, 50 LED strips. Uh, they're about five or six millimeters apart, centimeters apart. Um, and I've tested off a USB supply. I can run one strip, no problem. I can run two. And if you do full white, it's a little bit dimmer white at the end, but it's still white. If you run three, it starts going yellow at the end. So what we have, what we have, <laughs> hiya. <laughs> so what we have is some nice heavy duty copper DC cable because these are strung together with typical Chineseium. And we're going to try fitting them in a fence. So, how far back can I go? Probably there. Okay. Um, first LED. Ah! Do a hole in a fence. Oh, tight fit, but yep, yeah, that goes. Right, so now the trick is now going to be not to drill through the cables when I do the next LED. I think. And don't keep my hand there either. Once we've got a few of these in, I think it's going to be a lot easier. <laughs> I do wonder whether we want to glue gun these as well. Well, I'm guessing not. <laughs> okay, use the force, Luke. I think this is going to work, you know. And what are you doing to make sure it stays level as you go across the fence? Um, eyesight and <laughs> we can see that they're, they're, they're 40 mil, right? So Wavy. we're going to go 60 mil there, which is there. 40 mil, which is there. It's going to be a while. Yep. Well, it's 200 LEDs. Yeah. Yeah. Perfectly uniform and level spacing. Right, so that's the first 50 LEDs, or rather the last 50 LEDs. We're working backwards. Um, they're not perfectly consistent in colour, but that's down to the LEDs, not the voltage. The, the, the prob There's two problems with voltage. These are 5 volt LEDs. They're RGB, red, green and blue. Blue needs more volts than green, green needs more volts than red. So if you get voltage drop, they start, you start to lose the blue, goes yellowy. Eventually you start to lose the green and it goes sort of pinky or red. So it's not ideal. There's two problems with voltage drop. Um, one of them is simply that as you go down the wire, you're drawing more and more current. There's resistance in these horrible Chinese wires and you lose voltage because resistance current means loss of voltage. That's how it works. The way we're addressing that is feed in voltage part way through. But again, we've got lots on these cables, but these are really quite thick copper cables. So they're going to have much less voltage drop because they're lower resistance. Uh, and the fact that we've got these and these together, so all together, feeding at both ends and at each join, we managed to keep the voltage up. The other problem with voltage drop is the amount of current the whole strip uses. If it uses more than your power supply can handle, you lose voltage at the supply because Nothing to do with resistance to the wires. It's because you're drawing more current than the supply can supply. And the way it reacts to that is the voltage drops. So if you haven't got a big enough supply, if we tried to run this off a USB cable, well, the USB power supply would probably trip and say no. If it was plugged into a computer, it would definitely say no. Um, if it tries really hard, you might get some lights lit up maybe at the start and then it disappears, but it just doesn't work properly at all. So we've got a nice juicy power supply, I think 20 amps or something. Um, which should have no trouble with the current, but we still have voltage drop. So even with that, if we didn't have this feed in, we'd lose color and brightness by the end. It was at this point that we soldiered on and drilled the remaining 150 holes, taking us to a total of 200 for this 11 meter fence. It is worth noting at this point that the LEDs themselves are waterproof, but the connections between the strings would not have been. So we protected them with some wago boxes and the controller at the end. 
as you can see here in this photo we've popped it all in the box and closed it up and done so for the rest of the connections along the fence and here we have the final effect this is running my DAS code which in all honesty doesn't really do uh, the capabilities of addressable LEDs justice but this is just our initial testing we will be having these lights do much more cool stuff down the road if you want to see more of that be sure to follow me and remember home is where the smart is.